Hey, welcome back. So the other day I got a request from one of the viewers to actually cover principal app driver section because it's a really powerful tool, especially for, you know, micro interactions and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do something like this. As you can see, this is a, like, imagine a fictitious photo shelf app example where I have my photos and perhaps I can just either preview them or delete them. So let's say if I would want to delete this blurry photo, one of the corners here, and I would want to maybe drag it to that uh, deletion icon, I could just take it that way and just leave it there and then it would reshuffle the other photos. Now it's quite easy to do this type of effect and kind of showcase exactly what your app could do, let's say, because one segment here is drivers, which is basically me dragging the photo and affecting other photos, which are individual blocks, as well as slightly tilting this, angling this block. And as you can see, increasing the opacity of a trash icon and actually scaling it once our block comes next to it. So this is quite easy to achieve with drivers and let's say if I move it even slower, boom, we deleted it. And the rest is basically done just by the basically different slides taking over. Let's go ahead and create this type of scenario from scratch. So actually you can, you know, onboard yourselves and understand drivers a little bit better. So I have this canvas with all the different blocks you just saw before, but they are not really functional. I have set up, you see the trash icon, let's say the header group, which contains uh, the text of photo shelf, an arrow to go back, a header block, as well as few blocks with different photos in it and one bad one, which is intentionally named so so we can actually remove it using the drivers as well as different states and as you can see in the preview i can do whatever i want i can drag around but nothing really happens if you can select one of the items which you want to drag let's say our blurred icon for example and you would want to make it draggable let's say so drivers can only be accessed through this icon and they can only work if the element is dynamic or let's say it has some sort of properties of vertical and horizontal dynamics. So I would want to make it draggable. Now, since our icon is primarily draggable vertically, we still need to drag it, let's say horizontally, so both should be active. You're gonna notice that our drivers woke up. They literally came to life because that's the timeline for keyframes for us to kind of like go ahead and manipulate that object on. So let's say, just as an example, as you can see, we have the Y axis 177 is the current position of it. But if we would move a little bit down to, let's say, I don't know, 700 is exactly where we would want to remove our photo. It kind of shows that position. And now what we can do next is basically utilize these positions. But let's say if this is our start position, we would want to add a keyframe and maybe manipulate on the opacity level or maybe angle or scale. So I would maybe do a scaling from here. And as you can see, it puts up. And then as it goes down, as we're dragging it down to let's say this, where it touches the trash icon, I would probably add another keyframe and maybe I would just reduce the scale to let's say 0.5. So it reduces in half size just drag it a little bit more to let's see 700 so as the user drags it down it's gonna become smaller and smaller until it reaches a trash bin and then I would probably want to also work with opacity so let's say as it nears the trash bin I would maybe want to add another keyframe and just add opacity and as it even goes even farther like so I probably want it to disappear so this was 100 keyframe on a bad one. And then here, we're probably gonna do it to zero. So basically as we drag it, it becomes smaller. And then in the end, once it reaches that keyframe of opacity, it disappears. Pretty cool. I'm also gonna probably shift it a little bit on a angle wise, so I can add another even keyframe. So let's see angle. And I'm probably gonna shift it just a little bit. So if this is our, let's say, start, and we shift it there, I'm probably gonna also add a keyframe somewhere here where I'm dropping it off. 
just gonna add another keyframe for angle and I'm probably gonna increase it like maybe that way something like that so it looks like it's actually being dragged looks pretty good for now at least and if we preview it you're gonna see that we have it mostly done again as you can see a preview is not aligned so we need to go back to the here I think this is our beginning 177 it's kind of like the dimensions where we started and if I preview it and now I start dragging it becomes smaller and then it disappears so that's one part of the part of the equation now what they want to do next it's basically manipulating other things. And that's where the strength of a driver comes in because as you interact with one object and as you, let's say, move it, you can also impact other objects. And that's the strength of the drivers. I cannot emphasize this enough because it's basically what people overlook it for and they don't really know that, you know, we can achieve so much of it. I'm gonna select all the objects, which basically in that specific Y position have to become in, um, active let's say or inactive in this case so i'm gonna go one by one let's say this is pick one and i'm gonna add a pick one opacity and as you can see as i start moving like this i'm gonna add another keyframe and i'm gonna just reduce the opacity to let's say uh, let's do it maybe 40 like so so as i start dragging boom this becomes 40 and then I'm going to select another pick, which is pick 3. I'm going to add the same opacity keyframe. And just see that it's aligned. So as you can see, this is the starter. And this is the other one. So I'm just going to reduce that 40 as well. And then I'm also going to add the same behavior to this picture. Like so. As you can see, I'm just making keyframes. This is a starter. This is the end. And I want to reduce it to 40, like so. And the last one is that picture. And I'm gonna, again, reduce the opacity from 100. Again, two keyframes, one is start, one is end. And I'm gonna make it 40. And this is how it's gonna look like. So as I'm dragging it down, everything is gonna be inactive until I reach that, and then we're gonna do something else. But for now, the moment the user would need stars dragging, they basically need to activate the trash can. So I'm gonna just select the trash can layer like so, and I'm gonna add a keyframe for one thing, which is scale, and another keyframe for the opacity, because at the moment it's blurred out, as you can see, it's 29%. So as I drag it down, I would want to activate it like, let's see, let's add a couple of keyframes and I'm just going to increase the scale of it like so. So it's like, woo. And then I'm going to also going to increase the opacity like so. So once I select, boom, it becomes active and it looks active. Again, I'm going to leave it up to you. So perhaps if you're following this, you can add more detail to it or other technicalities. But once it reaches the thing and it fades, I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. So I'm gonna add maybe another keyframe on the scale side and on opacity side. And then really quickly, just for it to kind of look like, so it, it expands really briefly to a lot like so. like so and then it goes back to normal which is basically like a sudden drop which was 29 percent opacity and it was if i'm correct below one or maybe one so it's gonna look like boom he just ate it like that as you can see and it's all about the keyframes here so like you can just add keyframe by keyframe and create the story that way. Remember, it's all about linear stories and the more stories you add, the bigger your prototype is gonna be like and the bigger the ecosystem, which you can understand. So if we preview it, you're gonna see that we have a lot of going on live. Now this is the end state. 
so if you want to drag it back you can do so you know it, 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 principle allows that the functionality but i would just drag it back to where it started which is 177 again and kind of goes forward in time that way so i'm gonna start dragging as you can see i can drag it anywhere i want once it nears that location boom it removes it and everything what goes back to business looks pretty good right so that's how we use drivers and as you can see i affected a lot of different objects just by moving that one thing down and on that x-axis i basically said it as you move that down you can move all the other bits you know to other locations and stuff like that so you build a story with the segments and different interactions and different drivers specifically to that object now the only thing what's missing is just that ending state so what i'm gonna do now you, you see i have a scene set up i'm just gonna make a copy and in that scene all i want to do is basically probably we just want to put it back so like so because we just copied all the drivers to a different uh, artboard so if you drag it down it's just gonna disappear like it should and what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna go one by one right here and i'm gonna increase the opacity of them so they're back to business and then I'm also gonna position them so they reshuffle like so. And don't fear about the drivers, uh, that's all right because we're gonna activate the animations to sort it out for us. We're only used in the first scene, in the second scene here. We don't need to worry about it. And now the only thing what's missing basically between these two states is just me selecting the action and saying when drag ends, then you basically drop it in that trash can just reshuffle stuff and open this state and let me show you exactly how it's gonna work so I'm gonna preview it and I'm gonna start dragging our item drop it there and boom it reshuffled everything nicely and that's a story that's a scenario you can export and basically show as one of your micro interactions for a app and show it to your developer who maybe doesn't understand of how it should behave so you sort out all the micro bits here and there. I hope this was useful and you understood exactly how you can use drivers to make something fancy happen. Again, think about all the scenarios you can make with them. I would just experiment because experimentation is always the most important bit of any software. And if you have any other questions of how to do something with principle, let me know down below. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. And as usual, I'll see you next time.